What up, everybody? BMF Season 3, Episode 7, titled Get Him Home. Starts off with Young Meech at baseball practice being taught how to bunt by his coach, Detective Bryant. Telling Meech that the idea is to risk yourself to give the base runners a chance to advance and get them just a little closer to home. Because that's all that matters in this game, getting them home. Then OGT, the narrator, went on to say, some lessons apply to every game, the one on the field and the one on the streets, and we had to learn them early. And of course, this could apply to moving weight, securing the shipment, or even to Meech and T's philosophy of playing hot potato with the work. Get it and get it gone just as fast as they got it. But like OG Meech the narrator said, in baseball, the worst thing that could happen is you lose the game. But in the drug game, you can lose your life. As the scene fast forward to Meech in St. Louis playing baseball with Jay Pusha and his brother Carter as their next door neighbor Kia watched the game from the sidelines. After Carter got done displaying that major league talent to Meech, as he walked off the baseball field to get some water, he was abducted. This was right after Meech just finished telling Jay Pusher that now that he's checked out his setup, he's ready to work with him and that they could take over the Southside projects and the entire Lou with the pure weight that he has. Something by the sound of things that Jay Pusher was in need of because the whole reason that Carter got abducted in the first place was because Jay Pusher pushed some bad product on some guys that got them caught up in some problems with somebody else who was threatening their lives. Now this is a situation that just about everybody in the game has experienced at one point or another. The first thing you do is always call your plug because there's a chance that he'd even know about it and he's going to get you back right. Especially if that's a plug you're used to dealing with. But if not and whoever sold you the bad work doesn't want to give you a refund, you got three options. Seek revenge, eat the loss, or try to get the bad work off on somebody else. So these dudes went to the desperate measures of grabbing up Carter to let Jay Pusher know how serious they were. But when they called Jay Pusher for the ransom money, Jay Pusher played hardball, letting them know that he would hunt them down and kill them. And telling Meech when he got off the phone that he can't meet their demands because everyone in the streets would look at him as weak. Meech tried talking some sense into Jay Pusher, telling him not to let his pride get in the way, but Jay Pusher wasn't hearing that. And this choice caused the guys to cut off Carter's finger and send it to Jay Pusher and his mama in the mail. But Jay Pusher still wasn't ready to pay and put a hundred racks on their heads instead. Two hundred if they brought Carter back alive. So at this point, Meech called up to Detroit to get T to send a thousand tickets down to St. Louis so Meech could help Jay Pusher get his brother back. Back in Detroit, the BMF crew was more than another loss. This time Terry's childhood friend Diz. And the crew was bringing in heavy artillery, ready to go to the mattresses. Like I said last week, the mattresses is a slang term for going to war. And to add insult to injury, Henry is going around town wearing Diz's piston starter jacket. But Terry had not did it didn't involve the risk of any more bodies dropping or anybody else getting roped up. T planned to meet with Blaze to let him know what Henry did to Diz to see if he would sideline her. But when T had his sit down with Blaze, Blaze told Terry that Henry's still his daughter and that would go against his reputation as a boss, a man, and a father. So Terry let Blaze know that he has no deal and that Henry was going to destroy everything he built. As he slid the gift that Blaze brought for his daughter back to him and told him if he isn't part of the solution, then he's going to start seeing him as part of the problem. Then when T went to see his daughter, knowing that Lawanda was still mad at him, he came through with gifts. One of the gifts being a new town and country minivan. Wanda's mother was happy about the van, but Wanda told Terry that he needs to help stay up with the child instead of chasing behind Markeisha. But T told her he wasn't going to be able to do that. But he did stay over that night and help. At the same time, T is hiding behind this minivan from Markeisha. But Markeisha found the papers to the minivan in the kitchen drawer the next morning looking for a pen. So Markeisha asked T if he bought any gifts for Wanda since she had the baby. And T lied and told her no. But Markeisha understand that T didn't feel comfortable telling her the truth, got a gift for Wanda herself, and went to try to make peace with her. But all Wanda did was snap at Keisha and let her know that the same fur that Keisha was wearing, T also bought one for her. And on Keisha's way out, Wanda let Keisha know that she's the real queen because she has his blood. 
Soon after this, Keisha was pulled over by a cop named Vince who used to do security for Boom and he gave Keisha his number. When T brought the gifts over to LaWanda, Lucille was also there and before he got there, she was bragging on Dr. Montclair delivering Wanda's baby. But when she spoke to T, she warned him about Keisha, letting him know that she's not a part of this family. But T warned Lucille back after Nikki told him that Lucille had been seeing Dr. McClare and said that if anyone isn't part of this family, then it's him. This is after Maurice had already sent flowers and a card to Lucille earlier in the episode. And to me, this was foul, knowing that Charles and Lucille are still living together, like trying to provoke Charles, maybe make Charles feel the same pain he felt when Charles stole Lucille away from him in high school. But Charles read the card and let Lucille know that if a man sends his wife flowers in the card to the house he built with his own hands, he damn sure is going to read that card before letting Lucille know that it's always been them. But they wouldn't be able to focus on their marital problems for too long because as Nikki was going through the metal detector at school, she was caught with a box cutter. Breeze tried to man up and say it was his, but the name C. Flannery was written on it. The box cutter being Charles' work tool. But Nikki let them know that she'll never be the same after watching Darius die in front of her and being helpless, not able to do anything about it. Later in the episode, Bree snuck over to check on Nikki and they had their first kiss. So hopefully Bree will have better fate than Darius because right after Darius and Nikki had their first kiss, he was killed by Lamar. Later in the episode, we see Lucille in the car hooking up with Maurice, letting him know that she just wants to have fun, as Maurice was trying to get Lucille to make a choice between him and Charles. But something still suspect is the fact that they're hooking up in a car, and they hooked up in his office before, adding to my suspicion that Maurice already has somebody at home. Then as Calix, Meech and T's driver, was bringing Meech a thousand tickets, he wrecked and crashed into a concrete wall at a decent speed. A guy at the said said he thinks the truck is full of coke, as Calix was unresponsive. So I don't know if Calix is dead or alive. But then it zoomed in on his U.S. Army veteran sticker, possibly to remind us that he was saved by Detective Jen in Season 1, or that he got pulled over by Jen and Bryant in Season 2. Also keep in mind that he's Hoop's cousin, and Jen and Bryant saw him leaving the stash house right before he got pulled over, but didn't know what he was doing. So if Calix is alive and the cops show up on the scene, this could be a problem for BMF moving forward. But right now, Brian and Jen are focused on other things. Brian has spent all his time at the bar, and Veronica Jen told her father that she's willing to walk through the fire to get revenge on Henry for killing her partner. Jen also let Bryant know that she got suspended right after mentioning Henry's name, and Bryant let her know that he wouldn't be surprised if the captain was on Blaze's payroll given the extent to his reach. And that Jen would never be able to take the Andreases down by the book. This caused Jen to go deep cover using her rat named Lenny who was the guy who purchased the ambulance to get her into Henry's gambling spot wearing a blonde wig. My prediction, this is not going to end well for Veronica Jen. But right now things aren't going too well for Henry because after Blaze wasn't willing to do anything about her, T's next plan was to undercut her and steal all her clientele, causing her not to be able to move the weight that she has, leaving her owing her plug money, and T's hoping that her plug will wipe her out for them. T's offering all of Henry's clientele an unbeatable price that Henry can't match. Seven grand less per bird than what Henry sells it for. He's doing this by using the whip method that Meech and T learned from Pint in Season 2 that allows them to double their product. Getting me back to the St. Louis situation. Jay Push's crew found the house they were keeping Carter, but when they busted in, the abductors were able to shoot it out with them and escape with Carter to a new spot. To make matters worse, Meech's initial plan fell through because of Calix crashing on his way down to the loo with the work. So Meech was now waiting on Sterling Black to get to St. Louis with the work instead. So I'm guessing that Meech was still using the whip method also because they lost those thousand tickets and acted like it wasn't even a big deal. But when Meech, Jay Push, and Kia went to check out the house, Meech noticed all the takeout they'd been eating. So Meech came up with a new plan to stake out the Chinese restaurant in that area looking for one of the abductors as he went to meet with Sterling Black. And the plan worked as one of the guys was spotted leaving the restaurant with food. 
So Meechan then rolled up on him and Sterling cut his finger off eye for an eye style. Then Kia, who was a former college softball player, beat dude until he gave Carter up. But Meech did promise the guys that he would get them out of town safe for giving Carter back. So Jay Pusher had to take the bounty off of the guys' heads. But Meech got Carter back to his mama alive, even though he's now missing a finger. So his baseball career might be up in the air now. Now keep in mind that the two abductors have a problem with a guy named Money Mo, who they said was more dangerous than Jay Pusher. So we can expect to be introduced to this character at some point. And also Jay Pusher mentioned an op named Ray, who might end up being a problem later on also. But before Meech got Carter back, we got to look into a wild task force in the loo that looked even worse than the Red Dog Task Force in Atlanta. They were going crazy tackling everyone on site. Meech and Sterling were able to get away pretending to be Cardinals players. But this task force will likely be a problem moving forward also. And after getting Carter home, Meech got a call from Duffy back in Atlanta letting him know that the grand jury threw out the big Mike case and it was good for him to come back to town. But before Meech left, he told Jay Pusher to get him a spot in the loo. But for saving Carter, Jay Pusher gave Meech one of his own spots. And we already knew Meech wasn't leaving the loo without smashing Kia first. So this was just the introduction to St. Louis, but best believe we'll be seeing a lot more of Meech going there. The intro said that St. Louis embraced Meech and always showed him love. And because they got Carter back without paying, the thousand tickets Sterling delivered was all profit. And the episode concluded with Meech returning to Atlanta after what had been likely around a month time. Because Duffy let Meech know that Glock is now the king of Atlanta. But Meech plans on Glock's throne being short-lived. While Meech was back in Atlanta reuniting with his crew, Terry was now meeting Marquisha's quote friend, Vince the Cop, face to face. And I don't know if Marquisha is so toxic, she had Vince meet her while she was with T, or T caught them unexpected. Almost like the future song says, Could never trust you, I still got your location on. Because if I'm T, I'm telling old girl to have her stuff out of my house by the next day because my baby mama and my children need a bigger place. Especially because the fact that her friend just so happens to be a cop. But T only made things worse by starting a problem with old boy because the fact he's a cop. And Marquisha got turned on from T's jealousy. So because of that, I can definitely see Marquisha keep doing things to make T jealous. Especially because she sees he's not even going to check her for it either. And there you have it. Leave your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments.